there everyone. Well, we'll start standing up today as we aim to practice a class design to make you a little bit more balanced by taking you out of your balance. So essentially balancing postures. Make sure that you are comfortable in your body, that you've got some blocks and bricks and also maybe a belt would be helpful with some books for support. Start wherever you are on your mat and we'll close our eyes to try to find a little bit of balance into our standing posture. Closing your eyes there, finding your weight into your feet. Making sure that the weight is evenly divided between the front and the back of the mat or your feet rather. <laughs> Feel the big toe mound, the little toe mound, the inner heel, the outer heel, pressing evenly. With your mind's eye, see a long cord going parallel to your spine all the way to the crown of the head and you're lifted, you're being lifted and the shoulders can relax and the arms can become a little bit longer. Notice how you are feeling right now. As you inhale and as you exhale, notice your breath. Are you breathing in through the nose or through the mouth today? Are you exhaling through the nose or through the mouth? There is no right or wrong, as long as you are breathing, of course. In our yoga practice, we favour, unless otherwise specified, we favour breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. But make sure that you are comfortable with your breath. Now use your breath to scan through your body to notice any areas of tension. Is it superficial tension that you can readjust by maybe simply releasing the body part that you may be keeping tension in? Or is it a postural tension whereby if you move a little bit more on the other side of where the tension is felt, this might disappear. Remember to only ever go as far as you feel is comfortable in your practice. And try to set an intention on your mat. And if you're not so sure about which intention to set, Maybe just to slow down, to back off, to come back to the breath if things get too much. When you're ready to slowly open in your eyes, and then we're going to bring a little bit of movement into our hands, just shaking them about a little bit and into the toes, lift the toes, spread them out and then bring them back down, big toe mound last. See whether you can bring your weight a little bit forward as if you were going to, as if someone was sort of gently pushing you in the back and you're trying to keep as you are. And then release, now the weight back into the heels. Can you lift the toes? I think I can on one leg, not on the other. <laughs> Good. We're going to, this time, come up onto the toes and maybe lift the arms together. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, release. Good, let's do this twice more. Inhale, arms up. Coming up onto your tippy toes. Exhale, release. Beautiful. And then again, inhale, arms up. 
Exhale, release, good. Take the hands to the hips, the weight onto the right leg, and we're going to take some um, movements into our ankles. So from here, you're going to come onto the top of the toes and then turn the ankle in one direction. So it might feel quite strong, you can. You could take the foot off the floor and take those ankle rotation this way. But here is if we're sort of squishing the toes to bring a little bit more blood flow. And then in the other direction. Release, this will have moved into your knee as well quite a bit. So taking the weight onto the left leg, we turn onto the top of the toes. If you have no broken toes, of course, otherwise remember you can do this. So from this, you are turning, so you're stretching the front of the ankle. And then in the other direction. Good, releasing, giving those feet a, a little bit of a shake as if you were shaking off a chewing gum that was stuck on your shoe. Good. And from this, let's move into the hips. Two options, taking concentric circles or taking figures of eight. I'll show you on either leg. So we'll start with hands to the hips, weight onto the right leg, and then you can start to take some circles if you need. And I've got a wall behind me, but make sure that you have some support. Then you change direction. Or you go this figure of eight, and then you change direction. So by now you have done the first leg. You might have done exactly like me, a little bit of circles and a little bit of hip rotations. Choose which one it's going to be on the other side. Take your weight onto the left leg. Lift the right leg and then decide what you're going to do. Feel that stretch to the hips. And then in the other direction. And then you can release. Good. From this as well, we're going to inhale and lift the arms up to shoulder height. I play a little piano. Move your fingers around, then have the thumbs in and the fingers over the thumbs and take some rotations into your wrists and then in the other direction. Then turn the palms facing up towards the ceiling, bring the fingers towards the shoulders so the elbows are at shoulder height. No worries if lifting them up is a bit too much, you can keep them down. From here, you're going to try to point the elbows up towards the ceiling, around towards one another, and back down. So again. And again. Three in the other direction. Perhaps even four, I'm losing count already. Releasing the arms down. Let's have a stretch into our neck as well. Leaving the shoulders down. You're going to inhale, simply gaze up, lengthening into the front of the throat. Come back through towards the center, exhale. Chin tucked towards the chest. So you inhale, you lift up, you gaze up. Exhale down. One last time. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale back through towards the center. This time we're going to allow the left ear to go towards the left shoulder. Giving ourselves another couple of breaths here. A little bit of space in the side of the neck. And then since you're at this angle here, you're going to sort of say yes, no, very slowly. So down first, and then you're gazing up, and then down, and up. Notice where you're feeling the stretch in your neck here. One last time, so the next time you look up. After this, you come back through to the center, very gently bringing the head back through towards the center for a breath, noticing what's going on. Moving over to the other side. So about three long breaths, you're allowing the, the neck to stretch. And then the 
to keeping the rest of the body relaxed if you can. And then you're going to inhale and gaze down. Exhale, gaze up. Inhale down. Exhale up. One last time. Down. And then up. Come back through towards the centre very, very gently, bringing yourself back up. Good. Perhaps one shoulder roll this way, one shoulder roll the other way. Good, let's see how we feel into our spine. For the spine, we're going to bend the knees. So I'll show you from the side. Here we bend the knees. We lengthen the tailbone, we take the hands together. So as we exhale, we round. Imagine holding a, a big beach ball. As we inhale, we take the arms and we chest bump. Exhale, round. Inhale, bump. Exhale round, inhale bump, good, one last time, and back up, good, now we can straighten the knees once more, to take a little bit of a side bend here, have the feet um, a little bit wide, to about outer hip width, left hand to the left hip, right arm comes to shoulder height, turns up, lift, and then pressing both feet down, you're going to take a little bit of a side bend here. You might start to feel the stretch on the right side of the body. And it could be anywhere from the outside of the foot all the way to the top of the hand. Come back through towards the centre. Over to the other side. Right hand to the right hip. Left arm out. Palm up. Over the head. Press the feet evenly. Remember, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. Inhale, come back through towards the centre. Good, shake those hands about, shake the legs about. From having those feet um, a little bit wide still, I've got a sliding mat here that wants to escape. So you've got your feet out of hip width, you bend the knees, and then you're going to take a little bit of a twist, just a gentle one to start with. Good. Come back through towards the centre. And then here, perhaps you will need your blocks or your bricks. We're going to inhale, lift the arms up, exhale, come forward to bring the hands to the bricks or to the legs, to come to half a, um, a tabletop here. Well, we can work on extending the spine, so keeping it long, we want a 90 degree angle here. Some of you might even be able to take the hands all the way down to the floor without um, having to bend the knees. If you do need to bend the knees, by all means do this. We're aiming to have a little bit of a stretch into the back of the body. One more breath here. And then to get a little bit more traction in the spine, if you want to, you can stay where you are, or you may just discard the bricks, hold onto the outside of the elbows and allow yourself to fall in Now I cannot do this without bending my knees, so I'm going to do so. Head hangs, I can shake it about a little bit, elbows from side to side. To challenge my balance here, I'm going to release my hands to my ankles and then straighten the back uh, or lengthen the back a little bit more and see whether I can gently come forward and lift the heels up off the floor, maybe only one at a time and release them. We'll do this once more. So if you did one heel, then you can do the other. See how uh, <laughs> exhilarating this is. Will I fall? Will I not? You will not. <laughs> And um, then from this, we're going to this time take it back. So I'm going to take my hands to my um, calves, 
Then I'm going to try to lift onto my heels. Ooh, this is the one where as I release back, I can only do one leg at a time. Deep, intense calf stretch, intense, sorry, calf stretch. Come back to the center as you exhale. This time is the other toes that lift up so you're on the heel. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Come back through towards the center. Bend the knees so your bellies and the chest are in contact. Take the arms wide. Very, very gently, you're going to lift yourself back up and then release the hands in towards the chest. Notice here, while well, the warmth in your body. Take the hands to the lower back, bend the knees, and it's as if you're scooping ice cream. So imagine your hands are the scoop, this is your pot of Hagen Dass, or that ice creams are available. You're going to lengthen, scoop, and then lift the chest. So imagine the vanilla or chocolate, whichever flavor, lifting up on your chest, releasing the shoulders away from the ears. Good. Taking a big open chest. Then gaze back through towards the center. Release the shoulders, straighten the legs, and find yourself standing on your mat. Let's come to the top of the mat here to take um, some sun salutations. We'll start them slowly and then move on to maybe being a, a, a little faster if we can. So from here we're going to inhale, arms up, exhale down. Inhale, come up onto your fingertips and again be curious, gaze forward. Exhale, release the head down. Inhale, take the right leg back and then the right knee down. Then lift the arms up. Then release down to the floor. Tuck the back foot, the front leg goes back, either onto your hands and knees, or you can start to push up into a down dog. Pressing the hands down to the floor, releasing the head, good. Then we're going to come up onto the toes, forward into a plank or a half a plank and then release ourselves down so elbows go behind you, nose, chin, chest, slide the knees behind you, if you were onto your hands and knees you do the same from there, hands come forward and then you allow that chest to melt through from the back body towards the front body, trying to keep some space between the ears and the shoulders, you can have the elbows further forward if that helps for your back. Slide the hands by the side of the chest, tuck the toes, bring yourself back down into a child's pose with your toes tucked so that you can either come back onto your hands and knees or into your down dog. Then we're going to lift the right leg. If you're in your down dog, you're going to bring it in between the hands. If you're onto the hands and knees, you can lift your body, bring the right leg, bring the hands back down to the floor. We inhale, lift up into a lunge. Exhale, hands down, tuck the back foot, back leg comes to the front, crown of the head down to the floor. We can bend the knees, inhale, lift, come back up through towards the center hands in towards the chest, hands out to the side, notice. We take the other side, so we inhale, arms up, knees bent, exhale down, inhale, gaze forward, be curious, exhale, fold in. Take the left leg back, the left knee down, arms up, arms down. Tuck the back foot, the front leg goes back into a down dog. Come up onto the toes, forward into a plank or a half a plank. Remember, you could already be onto your hands and knees anyways. And release yourself all the way down. Sphinx again, or if you're ready to go into any other back bend, then please do so. A breath or two, melting the back of the back towards the chest, release the hands to the side, tuck the toes, sit back into your heels, lift back up in whichever feels more comfortable. And then you're making your way forward to your lunge. 
inhale arms up exhale take the hands to the floor the back leg comes to the front crown of the head down and then bend the knees inhale lift up then arms in towards the chest and hands to the side of the body we'll take two more of those feel free to go faster to go slower if you want to um, pause and fast forward to the rest then if you've had enough with your two sensor loops then that's fine if you can do four when I do two it's up to you let's go for it inhale arms up exhale down right leg to the back inhale arms up exhale arms down front leg goes towards the back of the mat up onto the toes, forward into a plank or a half a plank, and then releasing yourself from those chin chest. Perhaps here you can do a hovering cobra by lifting the hands by the side of the chest and you're activating your back muscles so your hands are your hands free. Sit back into your heels, lift back into a down dog, or hands and knees, right leg lifts, right leg comes forward, left knee to the floor arms up arms down back leg to the front bend the knees inhale arms up exhale hands in towards the chest one breath here let's do this again inhale arms up exhale arms down left leg goes back left knee goes down inhale arms up exhale arms down front leg goes back into down dog or hands and knees and then you come forward into a plank or a half plank release yourself all the way down maybe this time sphinx hovering cobra you slide the hands towards your lower ribs you press the top of the feet down you lengthen the tailbone and you lift yourself up into an upward facing dog knees off the floor then back into hands and knees or down dog. Left leg lifts and comes forward, right knee down to the floor. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. Back leg steps to the front, crown of the head down. Bend the knee, sweep the floor. Inhale, lift up. Hands in towards the chest then hands out to the side and take a breath or two here to notice your flow, your heart rate, your breath. I've moved back onto my mat simply um, so that you can see me better but you may still be at the top of your mat. From wherever you are you're going to take a lunge so you take the left leg forward, the right leg back the heel on the back leg is lifted and here we're going to do a, a little bit of balancing in terms of trying to come down a little bit with the back leg keeping the front knee bent. If it's too much for your knees, simply stay here and have the idea of releasing the heel back and taking it forward to challenge the balance. Otherwise it's here and lift up and here and lift up. We can even inhale, lift the arms, exhale, release the arms. Inhale, lift the arms, exhale, release the arms. We'll do this one last time. A bit of warmth into the leg as well. Let's change side, take a breath at the top. You've got your legs wide enough so your stance is about hip width apart, so your balance is already there. We're challenging that balance. Remember, if bending the knees is too much, it's the heel on the back leg that will go back as you inhale and lift the arms, as you exhale and allow the knee to come back up. Otherwise, here, we're going to inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale inhale exhale can you believe it i've lost count let's say <laughs> once more whoops and then come back to the top of the mat and have a breath 
or two. You can use a, a, a brick for the next one for a little bit of support. Or in fact, two I'd say actually for um, the height. So here, what you could do is stay here and then open the knee out to the side. So you come into your, your balancing tree if, you're, if you think that uh, you need a little bit of support. Or taking the weight onto that um, left leg, lifting the right leg, opening it out to the side and then releasing to wherever you feel comfortable on the, on the leg. If you think you're going to slide then it's better to have the, the leg lower down. Stay here until you feel that you can have the knee opening out to the side as well as being long onto that supporting standing leg. Lift the arms up to shoulder height, turn the palms, the forearms, the upper arms, and then take any variation with your arms that you wish to take. I'm going to take mine in towards the chest today, but you could take your arms over the head. Here to challenge the balance a little bit, let's bend into that supporting knee. Then we're going to slide the leg across and sit a little bit. If it's not for you, you could keep the leg straight and have just that leg crossing over instead. Otherwise, take this as a little bit of a sit, seat, sorry. <laughs> And then we're going to release, release the foot down to the floor, take the arms out to the side. Moving on to the other side, so remember you could have your support, your two bricks underneath your left foot, or even just the toes to the floor. Take the left foot, wherever feels comfortable on the leg, you press, so they're like magnets that press against the leg, the leg press against the foot so you keep your balance. Keep opening the knee out to the side. Keep your gaze to a point that's not going to move to help with the balance. And then maybe, maybe you lift the arms, you turn the palms, and you take whichever variation feels comfortable. Take a few breaths here. Relaxed in the shoulders. If your arms are up, take the palms together in towards the chest, bend the supporting knee and slide the leg on top so it's on the thigh. Issues with the knees, just cross the legs here. A little lower down. Try to keep the shoulders and the hips aligned. And take a few breaths. and then we'll release the arms up, the foot to the floor. Good, you can shift your legs out to the side. Give your legs a little bit of a wiggle wobble here. Come towards the long end of the mat. Apologies for my sliding mat. Obviously, it's not a play game. From here, bend the knees, one, two, three, jump out. Hands to the hips, take the right toes, point them towards the front, top right corner of the mat. Left toes directly towards the top of the mat at 90 degrees, bend into the front knee, shoulders and hips facing towards the long end of the mat and the arms up to shoulder height. You can gaze towards the middle finger of the front arm. From here, we're going to inhale, reach forward, but this time take the top arm up and as if we had a big beach ball again on our arm. So we're going to come forward, so stretch the side of the body. Inhale back through towards the center. Exhale. Inhale. 
Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. One last time. Exhale. Inhale. Hands to the hips. Straighten the front leg. You're going to pivot onto the ball of the back foot to come forward. Back heel is lifted. Take the back leg a little bit more in. Hands to the front thigh. Lift the body forward. This is where also you may want to have <laughs> your bricks at hand. I am notoriously naughty about not telling you when to have your bricks. I do apologize. So here, hips are um, towards the front. You can have the hands to the block of the brick and you can stretch into the back leg. Lengthen the spine. Bend into the front knee, then lift the back leg. So you've got the hands onto either the leg, the support of the floor. Come up onto the toes of the back foot lift and then push the leg back a little bit so that you're long into your spine drop that standing hip here the left hip in other words it's the toes that turn towards the other side of the room as opposed to where your hip is so that you keep your hips parallel then you can bend the front knee release the back foot down so you're essentially coming back into a lunge take your bricks with you you might need them on the other side again your feet are parallel. Take the right toes, left toes. I've lost my left and right again. <laughs> Turning in. And now the right toes, there we go, are facing towards the top of the mat. Again, you bend the front knee, shoulders and hips release towards the front. Take the arms up to shoulder height, relax. Gaze towards the middle finger of the front arm. Inhale and then as you exhale, inhale, lift back up. So you start to use your core as well as your balance on this one. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale. Then you're going to come back through towards the center. Hands to the hip, pivot onto the back toes so that you're actually about hip width apart. Take the back leg a little bit more in. Lengthen the front of the body, hands to the thigh, and you're going to bring yourself forward and down. You might you want to use your bricks. Pressing evenly, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel. Then bend the front knee slightly, come up onto the toes of the back foot, lift yourself up here and push the back leg back behind you once more so that you'll start to feel that little um, balancing procedures here. So the left toes turn towards the, the right side so your hip stays level. Use your core, maybe you can even take the hands up off the brick to really, really work. And then the front knee release and then come back up and out to the side. Well done. You can jump or walk the legs back in. Good. From this, take a couple of breaths. Let's face back towards the long end of the mat. Have your bricks, in fact, have um, bricks to the floor in front of you. So we're going to start again where we were doing the, the lunge. Have the left foot into the middle of the floor. 
bending into the front knee. Come up onto the toes of the left leg and then bring the hands forward and down towards your bricks so you may need to readjust where they are. Then start to lift the back leg and again push it back in. You might want to stay here or if you want to you can bend the front knee slightly. You can start to either take the hands to the hips and find you're a rocket man. Have the hands onto the lower back, even if you wish. You could have the hands out to the side in aeroplane, or you could even take your arms forward so that you come into Virabhadrasana three or warrior three. So here you drop the chest, you drop, you drop, you drop, you drop, you drop the chest. You keep those hips level. You can bend the knees and come all the way back up. I don't know about you, but I certainly feel a little bit of warmth in my body. A couple of breaths here. Let's do this on the other side. So this time, right knee bends. Take the left toes back as if you were just onto the ball, not as if you are onto the ball of the back foot. You can bend the front knee a little bit. Lift into the chest and then we're going to come forward. You can use your hands to your supports. So we set up where we have the spine extended and long, we gaze down so that if we had a fringe, it'd be hanging down here, not looking up and compressing in the neck and lengthening. The back leg is pushing back as well. Can bend the front knee a little bit and then I can decide whether I want to stay where I am with my hands or take them back into the rocket man or take them forward into the warrior three drop the chest be long in the arms push the foot back reach forward then bend the front knee and come all the way back up and release the hands down to the side good find a few breaths here and notice where you feel that things have worked and notice your heart rate too any residual tension that you want to shake about shake off good from this let's come to the top of the mat Inhale, lift the arms up over the head, bend the knees, lift the chest, release the hands behind you, scoop that ice cream, lift the chest, roll the shoulders back, take a lovely gentle back bend. If your neck allows it, you can um, take the neck all the way back. Then gaze all the way back through to the front, straighten the legs. Inhale, lift the arms up, exhale, release yourself over and down to the floor. Take the right leg back and then take the left leg back. Come down onto your knees and take a little bit of a rest into your child's posture. So bottom to the heels, hand behind you, forehead to the floor. If the forehead doesn't reach the floor, you can take your hands into a little pillow. You can take a block or a brick to support you. If you want to, you can even take the legs wider to allow yourself to completely release the belly and the chest towards the floor. Your heels may lift up, sorry, your bottom may lift up off the heels a little bit, and that's okay. Then take the hands to the side of the knees, slowly and curl yourself back. We're going to make it back to our hands and knees. Set yourself up, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Onto our hands and knees with the hands under the shoulders, the knees under the hips. 
Let's take the left leg back and lift it up. So we try to still keep those hips parallel as we did in the warrior three. And you can take the right arm up off the floor. That's totally an option. You could also have your hands into a fist if that's more comfortable for your wrists. And so here you're finding that core balance. Take another breath. Then release the leg, release the arm, move to the other side. So you straighten the right leg, you lift it up, keep it to hip height. You may stay here or you may be on your wrists. Or you may lift the left arm, keep that neck long. Not dissimilar to a warrior three, except you've got one of each limb on the floor. Another couple of breaths. And then release. You can sit back onto your heels or simply be onto your shins if that's more comfortable for you. Move those wrists about. And then here we'll come to a modified side plank. Coming to the hands and knees, we're going to take the left arm forward. So there's a slope from the shoulder and the floor. The left knee will come in line with the back of the wrist and then we'll sort of flip out. So that then the right foot comes down to the floor and the heel is in line with the knee. And then from here we can lift up into a side plank, a modified side plank. You can now lift the leg and then push out a little bit more out to the side. That's also challenging your balance. Take another breath here. Then release the foot to the floor. Bring yourself back through towards the front. Either move straight away to the other side or take a few breaths. Other side, right arm comes further forward than the shoulder. Right knee comes behind or in line with the wrist then flicks out. Then the left foot all the way flat to the floor with the heel in line with the knee and you can lift the arm up here you can gaze down you can gaze forward you can gaze up if you want more you can lift the back leg a little bit more and push back so you're not coming too forward and take a few breaths and then release the foot, release the hand, come back into your child's pose or whichever variation feels comfortable. You can flick onto your back and hug the knees if that's more comfortable for you. Forehead down to the floor. And then from here, let's move back to our hands and knees. You can repeat this to the left and then to the right again, just as we did. If you'd like to go a little further, you bring yourself into a down dog posture, so hands forward, bring yourself up, tuck the toes, lift the sitting bones up towards the ceiling, releasing the shoulders away, so you press the hands down to the floor. And then from here, we've got the legs wide enough so that here we're going to release both heels towards the left so that the right heel comes in line with the left toes and then we can lift the right arm up so this will be your side plank vasistasana with the legs on the side but you could also stack those legs remember your shoulders you may well want to do the earlier option and if you want to balance here a little bit and be a little bit of a star. Lengthening the crown of the head forward, whoop, tailbone back. <laughs> you can also start to open your arm, your heart, or just fall like I am really. <laughs> and then come back through towards the center. We'll do this to the other side. So you're back into your down dog. 
legs wide enough so that when you come over with both heels over towards the right, you can lift the left arm and bring yourself this way. You can take the other leg on top and that may well be enough. So crown of the head long, tailbone long, using the core muscles that we've worked on in, through several postures so far. And you can even lift the leg. And then you can release, come back through towards the center, knees to the floor, have a little rest here. Taking the pressure away from the wrist, so your hands might be forward or they might be back. You might want to shake them. And we can try a third option here. You can stick to the first one. You can stick to opposite arm and leg as well. You could have a rest. You could come back to the side plank. Or here you could try to work a little bit into a, a side tree, a toppled over tree. I have a feeling I will fall, which happens. So here, hands forward, tuck the toes, lift yourself back into a down dog. Legs wide enough, roll the legs over to the side. Bring yourself back into your side plank. And if you wish, you slide the top leg and you press the foot against the leg just as you did when you were standing up with the knee opened out. Keep the crown of the head um, towards the top of the mat. I'm going sort of more forward so my bottom sticking out, which I'm trying to correct here to keep the balance going. Then you can release that leg extended, come back through towards the center, move straight to the other side or have a rest between sides. So you release, lift the left arm up, have those legs stacked. And maybe if you want to, you lift up that standing leg so that you can be open and you're a side tree here. Another couple of breaths. And then release, this time knees to the floor. Hands behind you for another rest for those arms. Feel the breath into the back of the body. hands to the side of the knees slowly and curling yourself back up. Legs out to the side, take them forward. Good. Finding yourself ready to come down to the floor. Scoop your bottoms towards your heels. Tuck the chin slowly and curling yourself all the way down to the floor. Here, I forgot to say, again, naughty me, block or brick might be handy if you've got issues with your knees, or if you find that you, your knees open out and you splay the knees out a little bit when you come to bridge. Whether your brick is between your feet or between your thighs, here, open the chest so you roll the shoulders back and down. The hands are to the side of the body with the toes pointing towards the heels, Big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel, outer heel, pressing down. If you slide the hand between the neck and the floor, there is space for your hand to get through there. Tuck the chin. Inhale, lengthen the tailbone, press those thighs. Exhale, lift up into Setu Bandhasana, your bridge posture. You may hold onto the side of the mats and then roll the shoulders under to lift yourself a little higher up or take any other variation that feels comfortable. Remember to keep pressing onto your feet to keep lifting and stay here for another five breaths. Or you may want to do this coming up and down and up and down.
When you're ready to release the hands, roll the shoulders out. Release the upper back, the middle back, the lower back. Release the brick wherever it is. If you have one, allow the knees to knock in and the feet to be a little wider than the hips. Palms are facing up towards the ceiling. From this, allow the knees to separate. And then walk the legs maybe a little bit wider if you wish. You're going to take the knees over towards the right. The arms to shoulder height and the gaze over to the left. Stay here for another five Bring the gaze to the centre, bring the knees to the centre. Recenter yourself if your hips and shoulders have moved around a little bit. And then take the knees over to the other side, the gaze into the opposite direction. Settle, allow the bones, the flesh to settle. And you'll take another five breath here. nose comes back to the centre, knees come back through towards the centre. Walk the feet under the knees, recenter yourself. One knee towards the chest, the other knee towards the chest. Tuck the chin, forehead towards the knees, hug the knees in. And then as we get ready to come into a relaxation, should you want to have a little bit of support underneath the head, a little bit of warmth and start to slowly slide yourself down back down to the floor when you are ready you may come into your relaxation posture by lying on the floor with your legs extended or your feet flat and your knees up maybe even the soles of the feet together and the knees wide Whatever feels good to you here. So you start to notice what it feels like to be you, to be in your body, in your breath now. Start by noticing the relaxation in your face. Is it indeed relaxed? Is your forehead smooth? Your eyes soft? Gaze towards your feet even with your eyes closed. You may want to separate the teeth and the lips to allow the tongue to drop into the back of the throat. Allow the body to make an imprint on the floor. If you feel 
feel there is a chance of you holding tension anywhere in your body. See if you can target it. Tense a little more as you inhale and then completely release the tension until there is no more tension in your body. And you can sense the breath slowing down. Paradoxically, everything becoming heavier in your body, yet lighter in your mind. If you find that your headspace is rushing around or away from where you are right now, gently bring it back. Maybe by bringing the awareness onto your breath and your breath alone. Be here, right now. are ready to bring yourself back round into your body, into the room. Gently allow the sounds inside and outside of the room to get to you as you start to take gentle movements. Making those movements bigger in your own time. Eventually, rolling yourself over onto one side, curled up into a ball. You can open your eyes. Stay here for another couple of breaths. Press the top hand down, slowly make your way back up to a comfortable seated posture with the head coming back up last. Inhale, arms up, exhale loudly through the mouth. Two more. arms up over the head, thumbs to the forehead for kind thoughts, to the lips for kind words, and to the heart for kind actions. I salute you. Namaste. <laughs>